May I again welcome everyone to this worship service. This is our second divine worship service for the day. And I'm happy that uh, the church is uh, now filled to capacity. We welcome both our regular visitors and our members as well. And the other visitors who have come just for the first time. And of course, also, I would like to welcome all of those who are viewing us online, those who are worshiping with us online. I believe that uh, you'll be just as richly blessed as those who are here in this hall of worship. Well, earlier, uh, there was uh, mention of... Uh, the College of Medicine of AUP. And uh, I just would want to mention in passing that uh, last week the results of the board exams, the late last board exams were released and three Adventist students were in the top 10 with one Adventist student as the number one passer. The, uh, of course, uh, Pastor and Mrs. Casimiro have been blessed also uh, because of uh, the passing of their, is it your daughter? Your daughter. Uh, your son. Okay. And we would like to congratulate them. Now, earlier, Dr. I now call her Dr. Dr. Shane Apolinario was here. Are you still here? If you are, may I request you to please stand. She got the ninth place in the board exams. And uh, she also studied in our Pasay City Academy, that academy which is just behind this church school building. Church building, rather. And we're happy that uh, God has... Uh, richly blessed and guided all these Adventist students who have uh, decided to take up medicine as their profession. Our messenger, God's messenger for this worship service is a very staunch advocate of lifestyle medicine. And to be more precise, of Adventist lifestyle. He is a layman, Brother Tamateo, and he has been going around, visiting several places, talking to several groups of people to encourage them to adopt health guidelines as shown to us in the Bible and in the spirit of prophecy. I'm sure that we'll also be richly blessed as we listen to God's message through Him today. Now may I just uh, share with you some thoughts about Sabbath keeping. Many of us know and believe that, uh, of course, we worship on the Sabbath day because God has blessed this day and hallowed it. But some are not aware of the additional ramifications of Sabbath blessing, uh, Sabbath keeping. Rather. So may I share with you this paragraph from the book uh, written by Dr. Bakioki. He says here on page 193, the Sabbath is divinely ordained to satisfy the human need for deeper spiritual communion with God. So when we come to church on Sabbath, we are actually looking after a deeper communion with God. And that is one of the blessings that we receive every time we come to church on Sabbath. We have a deeper communion with God. As a symbol of God's commitment to bless His people with His presence, the Sabbath invites the believer to enter into a special relationship with Him. And this, I believe this is uh, what 
those people who do not come to church, I know, I'm, I, I know there are Adventists who do not come to church regularly. This is what they miss. They miss entering into a special relationship with God. Now, this uh, special relationship with God has been emphasized uh, also by Ezekiel when he said, Hello, my Sabbath, in order to know that I am the Lord who sanctifies you. May these uh, thoughts uh, uh, be with us as we continue our worship service today.
Heavenly Father, once again, thank you for the blessing. Thank you for uh, the love that we experience from Thee, that we are able to uh, praise Thee. Thank you for everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. It is uh, now time for us to worship God through giving. And uh, I'd like to read a few verses from chapter 3 of Malachi. You see, whenever we, or most of the time, when we talk about stewardship, we read only verse 10 of Malachi chapter 3, and we stop there. But if you continue reading, you'll find that God has an important message also for us. Let us read uh, Malachi chapter 3 and start reading from verse 13 up to 15. Verse 13, this is God talking. You have spoken arrogantly against me, says the Lord. Yet you ask, what have we said against you? Verse 14, you have said it is futile to serve God. What do we gain by carrying out his requirement and going about it like mourners before the Lord Almighty? Now, this words, his requirement, refers to the previous verses where God instructed the people to bring back to the storehouse the tithes and offerings. So the people were asking, what do we gain? By carrying out his requirement and going, notice his words, going about like mourners before the Lord Almighty. But now we call the arrogant blessed. Certainly, evildoers prosper. And even when they put God to the rest, to the test, they get away with it. In these verses, we find that uh, there are three kinds of givers. The first kind are those who give mournfully. It says, what do we gain by carrying out this requirement and going about like mourners? They give mournfully or reluctantly or hesitantly, just like those who are paying tax. You know, come April, many will be filing their income tax returns, and there are many who are hesitant to pay their taxes, and as much as possible, they would want their taxes to be reduced. And so God said there are people who give mournfully. The second group are those who give as if they are deprived of something. What's that something? Some will say, well, if I give my money now, I will not be able to buy a new pair of shoes. I will not be able to go to a buffet restaurant. I will not be able to buy new appliances for the house. That is, these are people who think that if they give to the Lord, they will be deprived of some things. The third, the third kind of givers are those who look at others and say, look at them. Look at that man. He's not giving, but he's still blessed. And they think that Evildoers, according to this verse, certainly evildoers prosper. So, if you look at other people when we give and compare our giving to, those, uh, to others, we may think that those who do not give are still blessed by God. But we should not be classified into any of these three groups of givers. Remember, as Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7, 
Give, let us give willingly. And he further said, God loves a cheerful giver. So, may I now request our deacons to please serve us. And as we give, let us give cheerfully.
faithfulness, dear Heavenly Father. And for this, we are deeply thankful. You have blessed us in various ways. And you have provided us even our wants and not just our needs. Thank you for giving, also for giving us this opportunity to give back to you a portion of the blessings that you have showered upon each one of us. And I pray, dear Father, that the amount that has been received will be used effectively for the furtherance of your work. I pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Let's remain standing for our scripture reading this morning. It is found in the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 14. If you have your Bible, open it on Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 14. And the text runs like this. Pursue peace with all people and holiness, without which no one will see the Lord. For those who are able, I invite you to please kneel down for a Our gracious God, our loving Father in heaven, we come before your presence this morning with humble hearts. We adore you and worship you, for thou art good to each one of us. Father, we come before you just as we are, and we would like to ask for the forgiveness of our sins that we have committed against you. Cleanse us, Lord, from all our unrighteousness, so that this morning as we worship you, we will be worthy to accept the blessings that you have prepared for each one of us through your chosen servant. Father in heaven, this morning we have a lot of things to thank you. First of all, we would like to thank you for the life in health that we are still enjoying today. Thank you for the love and care that you are bestowing to each one of us. Father in heaven, this morning we would like to express our thanks and gratitude also to thee for the result of the recent medical board exam that you have bestowed to all your children who took the examination and were able to pass, and three of them landed in the top ten. I pray, Lord, that thou wilt use these new physicians of yours to be a great physician on this earth for your glory. Father, this morning we would like to entrust to you our speaker, Dr. Tam Matthew. Will thou be with him as he impart the message to us, especially the relation of diet in character formation for the second part of our service this morning. Help us, Lord to value the health that you are giving us. Help us to value the life that you have given us. Father in heaven, we know that value has a value only if its value is valued. Help us to accept and implant it in our minds this morning. For we ask all these things in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
It is uh, really a blessing to be part of you and be with our beloved brethren, brothers and sisters here in Pasay English. 
But first of all, I just want to thank the Lord for it and to recognize the uh, our Honorable President, CLC, President Pastor Casimiro, would you stand up with your family? And also our church pastor, Pastor uh, Sue, and all the elders and leaders who are working in behalf in our church here. This morning, I will continue to go on, to continue discussing about the subject of uh, the relations of diet into character formation. Because I believe that uh, this is the only treasures that God recognizes when He comes for the second time. The character is the only treasure that we can present before the Lord when He comes for the second time. And that is the only treasure that we must do our part. And that is the reasons why we situate. No mention shall be made of coral or a pearls, for the prize of wisdom is above brabus. A character form according to the divine likeness is the only treasure that we can take from this world to the next. Those who are under the instructions of Christ in this world will take every divine attainment with them to the heavenly mansions. And in heaven, we are continually to improve. Discussing about the character formation is one of the most difficult part to educate. No pain, no gain. But as we continue studying and reading the Bible and the spirit of prophecy, will give us some sort of idea and proper understanding that something that that is the major work of Satan to destroy human mind. Because the physical aspect and the mental aspect are working together, are connected to each other. And the fruit is that is character. The, the, the physical, the mental, and the spiritual are being together, and we just can't ignore, ignore the importance of the, uh, the physical part. And this morning, I just want to tell you that for me, it's not an easy to talk about, because I know that even our own Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, during his time when he was preaching, by his example, he will realize that standing before the people is something that is not an ordinary thing because I must be a good example. The word Christian means Christ-like in character. And Jesus was so powerful because what he taught, he is. And what he preached, he practice. And when we are preaching and we are, when we are teaching something, we must say to it that we enjoy doing it. The life of Christ is the power, and the more than this, what he thought he was. Go ahead and up. continue. His words were the expression not only of his own life experience, but of his own character. Not only did he teach the truth, but he was the truth. It was this that gave his teaching power. And when we are dealing in regards with the uh, blessings of truth, especially to the law and to the testimony, it means that we must practice obeying the law of God. And also, testimony in Revelation 19.10 talks about the spirit of prophecy. We have the gift of prophecy. And we just can compare Seventh-day Adventists to other religions because we have all the written prophecy from the start to the end. Alpha and Omega. And that is the reasons why I am so much proud to stand before you 
knowing that we are being blessed with so many precious truths in the Bible and the spirit of prophecy. And in the book, Thessalonians 5.23, that there is what you call it, a very important work before Jesus will come for the second time because we need a quality, proper way of preparing ourselves before he comes for the second time. It means the physical part must be healthy. And also, I believe that we are in the very borders of eternal world. And the life work now here, let me read, should be to prepare for eternity. We know not how soon our life work here may close, and how essential that our low, sinful nature should be overcome. And we conform to the image of Christ. We have not one woman's time to squander. Our lifetime is granted us to seek eternal life. God has granted us probation. If we live over three score years and ten, how short is this period to work out our own salvation? So this particular message, the work of building and developing the character of Christ, the image of Christ, should be the number one considerations of every Seventh-day Adventist. And I know that God, in honor to him, he will vindicate within God's people that God's people will develop the, the very image of Christ. And before that happens, we must also realize that our diet has something to do with it. Going back a little bit in the experience of Israelites during that time, God wants them to be pure before they will give them the blessings to enter the promised land. But God gave them a very strong test. While they are traveling, going to the land of promise, the Israelites, helpfully in chapter 42. It says in the air that God used diet. God gave them manna. And just take a look. Meat is not essential for health or strength, else the Lord made a mistake when he provided food for Adam and Eve before their fall. All the elements of nutrition are contained in the fruits, vegetables, and grains. The Lord intends to bring his people back to live upon simple fruits, vegetables, and grains. He led the children of Israel into the wilderness where they could not get a flesh diet, and he gave them the bread of heaven. Man did eat angel's food, but they craved the flesh parts of Egypt and mourned and cried for flesh. Now, withstanding the promise of the Lord, there is another one. If they would submit to his will, he would carry them into the land of Canaan and establish them there, a pure, holy, happy people, and that there should not be a feeble one in all their tribes, for he would take away all sickness from among them. The Lord would have given them flesh had it been essential for their health, but who had created and redeemed them led them through long journey in the wilderness to educate, discipline, and train them in correct habit. So we learn something that God always used the word if. Remember 382 of our Councils on Diet? Let's read it again. This is a very interesting one. It says in there that if Seventh-day Adventists practice what they profess to believe, if If they were sincere health reformers, they would indeed be a spectacle to the world, to angels and to men. And they would show a far greater zeal for the salvations of those who are ignorant of the truth. 
Greater reform should be seen among the people who claim to be looking for the soon appearing of Christ. Health reform is to do among our people a work which it has not yet done. There are those who owe to be awake to the danger of meat eating, who are still eating the flesh of animals, thus endangering the physical, mental, and spiritual health. Many who are now only have converted on the questions of bed eating will go from God's people to walk no more with them. It means that those people are still eating flesh food. They are. I'm sorry. They are half converted. When you look at the uh, prophecy of Ellen G. White in the book Great Controversy, 608, talks about that large number of Seventh-day Adventists will join the opposition. Why? And we will learn that through studying the Bible and the spirit of prophecy. Because they were not here uh, hearing and following the good news that God is giving within God's people, especially in the area of health reform. And also, there's two members inside the church. One is written in the book of life. One is written in the uh, church record, church book. And we don't want to be out of that uh, book in the book of life. Many who are without spiritual life have their names on the church records. But they are not written in the Lamb's book of life. They may be joined to the church, but they are not united to the Lord. They may be diligent in the performance of a certain set of duties and may be regarded as a living man. But many are among those who have a name thou, that thou livest and art dead. We want to make it sure that, that our name will retain, will remain in the books of heaven. And during 1863, before that happened, Ellen G. White was suffering with so many illnesses. And he was uh, praying before God to help her. And the Lord gave her the vision in the area of health, believing the health reform. And he started writing continuously the book of health. And finally, he is promoting eating more on fruits, nuts, grains, and vegetables to go back with the original diet. And when you are reading this book, there is a chapter here, Diet and Spirituality. You read that chapter. And also, the relations of moral into spirituality. The, the relations of diet into moral. And without the shadow of the doubt that we are now living in the most solemn time, knowing God is doing His work as our mediator, mediating within God's people, that God's people is now, is now working under that what you call it sanctification process. And I know that this is something very interesting to talk about. Just this morning, I was discussing about regeneration process that our body is more than capable of uh, recreating equality blood, changing a new tissue after six months, and after a year, we could even uh, expect something that we can regenerate a new brain. But depends upon on how we eat. The human body, I'm sorry, your diet has a major impact on how successfully your body is at these regenerations. Go ahead. The entire human body right down to the last atom is replaced every five to seven years. Go ahead. The human body is an incredible machine. Part of what makes it so impressive is its ability to regenerate itself. Just take a look. The brain, the kidney, the liver, all parts of the body, and I believe 100% that we could even possibly uh, reverse the aging process. As I had mentioned this morning, at the age of 
32. During that time, when I was in the United States, I was weighing 185 pounds. I look older. Having high blood pressure. During that time, my wife developed breast cancer because we've been working hard to make a good living. And by the blessings of God, we're able to reach our goal. We became very rich during that time. Driving Mercedes Benz, Corvette, living in high elevated in Glendale, North Verdugo. But we don't even know the, the importance of proper diet. <clears throat> Finally, <clears throat> when my wife developed breast tumor, I realized that money cannot give you a true happiness in life. And ask the Lord for help. And to make my story short, we were able to overcome that kind of disease. And we promise before God that we are going to go back within our own people here in the Philippines and continue this kind of health education to educate the people that we should not get scared when you develop breast cancer. Because I know that even the spirit of prophecy talks about <clears throat> that cancer, tumor, and all inflammatory diseases are largely caused by meat eating. And also there is a diet also that can, that can make you happy. There's a diet that can make you sick or can make you upset. But the point is, what particular food are we going to choose? Let's put it there. <clears throat> Let's take a look. Foods that may trigger a happy mood. <coughs> Baked potatoes with skin. Lentils. We are talking about science. And also the Bible and the spirit of prophecy. <clears throat> Roasted pumpkin seeds, soybean nuts, sunflower seeds, and tofu. Foods that improve your mood. Let's take a look. Especially banana. Go back a little bit. You know banana? We find out that there is what you call it material that can help to boost the happy hormone, the indoor pig. And that is the reason why I love to eat banana every day. That's why when you see your wife being upset, give, him, give her banana every day. At least five bananas every day. Let's take a look. There is what you call it sucrose, fructose, glucose, and brain tonic. In Tagalog, pag masong itang mitis nyo, bigyan nyo ng saging, babait yan. Alam nyo, hindi ako sanay mag-English eh. And there is 32 minerals. Four times protein compared with apple. Twice the carbohydrates. Three times the phosphorus. Five, the vitamin A and iron. Twice the other minerals rich in potassium. That's why when you have heart problem, eat a lot of bananas every day. That's why I planted 12,000 bananas in my own compound. Nang namumunga na, ninanakaw ng kapitbahay. Pero pag nakain nila yung banana, natanim namin, papait sila. Bananas are considered to be a complete food. But when we open and derate them, yet this exotic fruit has potential to be the next great health revolution as it is simply loaded with nutrients. This yellow skin miracle is a high in natural sugars, fructose, and sucrose, various nutrients, vitamins, and minerals, and fibers. Apparently, its regular consumption can provide amazing health benefits if you eat two bananas per day for a month. This is what happened to your body. You will become smart and very happy. And not only that, we are so much blessing here in our own country. You know, after the fall, 
when Adam and Eve disobey God, the Lord added additional food, additional food. They call it green vegetables. After so many years in the United States, I was able to uh, receive some information from the book of uh, Betty Cayman. She was famous in there because she's a doctor of nutrition and also a PhD and so on, explaining everything about the benefit or the nutrients and so on that they can get from the green stuff, the green pigment, the green blood, the green chlorophyll. According with that book, with the backup of the uh, scientific, uh, what you call it, findings in that particular product, they find out that those green stuff contain so much amount of essential minerals that can help to normalize the blood pH. We always remember that natural healing can only take place, could only, could only, be, could only take place unless we look at the blood chemistry. Once the blood turns into normal blood pH or blood chemistry, healing will follow. We need minerals, essential minerals for the bone. We need essential minerals for the heart. All parts of the body are needing those kinds of essential minerals. Just take a look, magnesium. All people who develop heart disease, science, I'm talking about science here. Magnesium regulates our electrolyte balance. Within every cell in the body, a proper balance of mineral content must be maintained. Magnesium's role in the healthy balance of important minerals such as calcium, sodium, and potassium affects the conduction of nerve impulse, muscle contraction, and heart rhythms. Magnesium deficiency is common in people with heart disease. Magnesium is administered in hospital for acute myocardial infarction and cardiac arrhythmia. Like any other muscle, the heart muscles require magnesium. And without the shadow of the doubt, according with the uh, recent studies, that uh, the best magnesium that we can get is from green vegetables. That's why I love to eat green. And we must be green-minded people. Because once you become green lover, believe me, you will become very strong. Just take a look. Daniel, during his time, 16 years old, 600 BC. How many thousands of years of that? He was forced to eat flesh food during that time. And he said that I am not going to partake that kind of food. And he requested, according to Daniel 1.16, he requested for what? Pure vegetables. And after 10 days, let's take a look. Thus the steward took away their portions of delicacies and the wine that they were to drink and gave them what? Vegetables. 10 times wiser. Comparing to those wise men who are not, who are not able to explain that dream. And it happens. They were declared that those who are, those who are eating vegetables, they call them wise. And those who are eating flesh food, they call them foolish. And if you want to be wise, why not just follow the instructions of God. And also one thing more. They gave him a hard time because those cabinet people of that palace made a law that everyone should bow down the image, the golden image. And since the Daniel was not going to bow down, what happened to him? Itinapon dun sa yung ib ng leon. The question says, kinain ba? Kinain ba si Daniel? No. Why? Vegetarian. <laughs> so if you are a vegetarian, 
we will be fit during Sunday, Lord. Because there is a big test during His time. Because they're going to kill them if they're not going to bow down. And I believe during Sunday, Lord, read the Bible and the Spirit of Prophecy. Those people who are healthy enough will stand for the last testing time. Remember that before the final visitations of God, 3SM 2.92, that those people who will witness a life before His coming, they will be free from all kinds of diseases. For those who are looking for the coming of the Lord, for those who are called to be laborers in His vineyard, for all who are three, feeding themselves for a place in the everlasting kingdom, how important that the brain be clear and the body as free as possible from whom? From what? From disease. And there's another one, quotations from the Spirit of Prophecy, that it is impossible for those to develop character. Let's read it. It should ever be kept prominent that the great object to be attained through this channel is not only health, but perfection and the spirit of holiness which cannot be attained with diseased bodies and minds. So it means that the message of regeneration before we will experience the uh, actual turnover in the process of restoration will not happen unless we'll become educated enough to consider the importance of eating natural food, to go back with the original diet, and they call it translation diet in the chapter that we, will, that we can read here in the book, Councils, Diet, and Food. And what is that? All nourishment and nutrients are being found. Let's take a look. It says in there that all the food element that the body needs in grains, fruits, vegetables, and nuts are to be found all the food elements that we need. No flesh. No fish, no eggs, no hot dog, no tilapia, no bangus. And this particular method given by God through LNG Y. And I said, no more, period. I want to be a pure vegetarian. And after 31 years of being vegetarian in Tagalog, Lagi akong binubulungan ng misis ko, lalo kang gumugwapo. <laughs> Tinitingnan ko naman yung salamin, yung mukha ko, totoo nga naman. <laughs> Just look at me, 63 years old. I invited all my friends and classmates during elementary. I tell you, I could see the difference. And you can plant good stuff, and you can start it right now. And in 10 years' time, when you invest so much effort and time, you do a regular exercise every day, you eat natural food, and you give all your stress in our, in our God. Remember, uh, Matthew 11, 28, come unto me, all ye that labor, and I will give you rest. Don't you know that stress is one of the most killing diseases? And once we follow exactly in the area of following the laws of health, then we'll be able to gain it back, the quality of health. And this morning, I just want to read one quotation from the Spirit of Prophecy. It talks about that God gives us no encouragement that He will do for us what we can do for ourselves. Natural laws are to be obeyed. We are not to fail of doing our part. God says to us, work out your own salvations with fear and trembling, for it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of His good pleasure. We cannot disregard the law of nature without disregarding the laws of God. We cannot expect the Lord to work a miracle for us while we neglect the simple remedies He has provided for us 
use, which aptly and importantly applied, will bring about a miraculous result. Therefore, pray, believe, and work. Neglecting to cooperate and follow the eight laws of health. Remember the character formation? Ellen G. White talks about something that not one in a hundred in every young people of today fully understood the message of eight laws of health. The same thing with righteousness by faith. In Gospel Worker 305, not one in a hundred are able to understand the message of righteousness by faith within. Let's take a look. Why I'm saying it? Because we need to start a new beginning, to start all over again. It means we need revival and reformation. That's why God's people, God is calling for God's people for a revival and reformation. There is not one in a hundred who understands for himself the Bible's truth on this subject. That is to necessary to our present and eternal welfare. One more now. The eight laws of There is not one youth in 100 who feels his God-given responsibility. Every physical and mental capability should be carefully preserved and put to the best and highest use to advance the glory of God. So it means there is reason behind why God is calling for a revival and reformation in every ranks. Why? Because God will not come unless our own beloved people receive the final message before he will put a final judgment within God's people. God is calling a revival and reformations in every ranks. When the church, medyo bumagal po yung computer eh, hindi ako masundan. The Lord calls for reformations all through our ranks. When the church is awakened, decided changes will be made. Men and women will be converted and so filled with they be by the Spirit of God that they will pass from country to country, from city to city, proclaiming the message of truth with hearts filled with earnest love for those. They will open their Bibles and present the word. So it means without giving some sort of awakening message within, if we are not going to do the best we can to awaken the church, there is no Big numbers of soul winning. The total member involvement could only be happened, could only be happened unless we started educating and giving proper way of giving the true message within our people. In 1 SM 121, this is the greatest deed within our church. Revival and reformations during our uh, general conference uh, session in. in in San Antonio, Texas, two years ago, I was there, and our jail uh, conference president talks about a revival. A revival of true godliness among us is the greatest and most urgent of all our needs. To seek this should be our first work. There must be earnest effort to obtain the blessings of the Lord. Blessings of not because God is not willing to bestow His blessings upon us, but because we are unprepared to receive it. And the main reasons why God is still not giving the full blessings because we are not yet ready. And the reasons why the Lord uh, are not actually doing to allow more member members within our church mainly because we are not fully converted yet. Just take a look, the reasons why. Let's go back again and read that quotation. The subject of health reform has been presented in the churches. But light has not been in heart till they receive. The selfish health destroying indulgences of men and women have contracted the influence of the message that is to prepare a people for the great day of God. If the churches expect strength, they must leave the truth which God has given them. If members of our churches disregard the light on this subject, they will reap the sure result in both spiritual and physical degeneracy. And the influence of these older church members will live in those newly come to the faith. The Lord does not now work to bring many souls in the truth because of the church members have not never members who have never been converted, and those who were once converted, but who have backslidden. How could we go up there if we are in the backslidden state? And the Lord actually using this particular subject, the health reform, to purify the church. And the only way for us to find out that we'll be able to stand 
in that particular purifying process, God wants us to learn something that this is the way of the Lord. Remembering that the work of health reform is the Lord's means for lessening suffering in our world and for purifying His church. Ellen G. White talks about it during the time of Adam and Eve. It says in here that as our first parents, there's testimony volume 3, 61, 62, as our first parents lost Eden through the indulgence of appetite, our only hope of regaining Eden is through the firm denial of appetite and passion. The controlling power of appetite will prove the ruin of thousands when if they will concur on this point, they will have the moral power to gain the victory over every temptation of Satan. So the only way to regain the heavenly home, we must learn how to control the appetite. Because appetite can control the mind and it will become our God. Knowing that it's not easy without the power of God. I'm not saying that I am better than you do. But one thing that I know that by the power of God, we'll be able to cooperate and follow with these instructions in this closing time. And God is encouraging each and every one not to look back. Go forward. We are very close. Remember the one I discussed this morning? Since 1991, we were waiting for that final development of these unifications of all religion all over the world. It was finished two years ago in Korea. They signed international law that all religion must be united. And after two years of doing that, just take a look. According to Ellen G. White, when the Protestantism it stretched their hand, When the Protestantism shall stretch her hand across the gulf to grasp the hand of the Roman power, it means what? The end is near. It's already finished. There is no more Protestant. You can search through internet. You will find out that the Lutheran churches, the evangelical churches, all Protestant churches are now joined with Catholicism. And that is the reason why there is what you call it revival now in the United States. They call it together. Go ahead and up. Protestantism, Protestantism shall give the hand of the fellows of the Roman power. Then there will be a law against the Sabbath of God's creation. And then it, it is that God will do his strange work. So it means uh, those prophecies, especially joining uh, together the Protestant and the Roman uh, Catholicism, are joined together. So what's going to be the next? They said that they will go against the Sabbath. I'm talking about Sunday law. And just take a look at the revival now go, going on in the United States. And we need to, to wake up. The great controversy are being fulfilled within our time today. Just take a look. And not more pasture because it's getting close. Vatican, Christians are not made in laboratory but in the community called the church. Pope Francis said, Pope accuses Christians of cowardliness for over-focus on following all Ten Commandments. Pope Francis gave a homily last week accusing Christians who avoid taking risks out of concern for the Ten Commandments as suffering from cowardliness, warning that such people become paralyzed and unable to go forward. Togetherness, the revival in Los Angeles, California. Pope advises Catholic lawmakers to be guided by church doctrine. August 29, 2017. Now, together, this is prophesied by Ellen G. White. This revival that happened within that, what you call it, fulfilled prophecy. The largest Jesus gathering in American history. It's time for the church to unite. Together, the world sees division. Join the campaign. Invite you to a great gathering of youth in Washington, D.C. Azusa now. Azusa now, 75,000 packed the L.A. Coalition to pray for revival. They have revival. And God is calling also the Seventh-day Adventists to join this revival and reformation. And I believe the second step, because they are doing everything now to see to it that they will be ready 
to test the true people of God within our church. With all the things happening, the modern society, the new technology, crime is going up, morality is going down the tube. Look at the technology and everything. Read last day events. We will find out that we are getting very close. And you have a big part. I have a big part also to share the truth to our people and to bring more souls before God. Because soon, there will have big problem, especially keeping the Sabbath just like today. And while the work is still open, why not just look up there and make some necessary decision that we are to repent fully and ask the Lord for forgiveness. We are all guilty before God. We are all sinners. I keep praying before the Lord that God will strengthen me to help me to overcome all the weaknesses that I have. It's not only you. I am having a hard time too. During the night, I tell you, I keep crying because I know the time is very short. And the way I look at my family, the way we keep the Sabbath, the way we look at my parents, my, my sisters and brothers and everything is something that we need to humble ourselves. Willing to participate with this total involvement in this year 2018. If every member of the church will bring two souls in the church, through their effort, by the help of God, we can reach over 100,000 souls inside the church. And why that, that's not happen? Because we are not converted yet. We are not aggressive enough or zealous enough to realize that those people are dying every day. Don't you know that there's a lot of things happening today? There's crisis going on all over the world. That disease is all over the world. Remember the Matkow disease when they started preaching it, teaching it during 1991? They are feeding animals with the same animals. And they develop Matkow disease. And according with the book International Meat Crisis and Matkow disease, according to Howard Lyman, that those animals damage their brain. They call it mad cow. And the people who partake that flesh, they will get that kind of disease. That's why there's a lot of people develop cruel felt Yakov disease. According with international meat crisis, that particular disease, cruel felt Yakov disease, they hide it under the skirt of Alzheimer disease. And that is the reason behind why I am sharing it by giving these kinds of education. Educating the people should be the number one consideration so that you will have a choice when it comes choosing the best food for yourself. And this morning I know that with all the written word and the spirit of prophecy that taking place that we must be serious enough not to play church anymore. Why not just get a lot of this book and give it to all your friends. Get great controversy and share it to your neighbors. Anything that we can do today Let's do it together. Amen. And don't forget, God loves us so much. He died for us. And we cannot afford to lose Him. Heaven is real. He's coming soon. But the question, are we ready to stand for the right principles? The reasons why God allowed people to eat flesh food Here's the reasons behind. We are blessed because that particular message given by God, it says in there that the Lord allowed flesh food to be eaten. To what? God permitted that long-lived race to eat animal food to shorten their sinful lives. Spirit of prophecy says that. And we don't want to shorten the lives of the people 
We want them to live longer and to enjoy their life. And after sharing and sharing something in the area of uh, what you call it, lifestyle diet, I tell you, for doing these kinds of work for more than 15 years, we have around over than 30,000 non-Adventist people change their lifestyle and becoming a vegetarian people. The question is, how is our people? How many vegetarians we have here? Would you mind if you raise your hand? How many members here who are a vegetarian? I'm not saying that vegetarianism is something that to use as a test of fellowship. No, no. This is not part of uh, what you call it, uh, to judge the people, especially to judge them that they will not be saved. But one thing that I know, that God wants us to cooperate and follow with the original diet that God can use to bring back a quality mind, the quality health that can bring more glorification before the Lord. And we need to be faithful in everything. Faithful keeping the Sabbath holy. Faithful in choosing the food we need every day. Faithful to all our friends and families. But most of all, be faithful to Him who died for you and for me and stand firm with the right principles because we believe 100% that God is coming soon. Thank you very much and God bless all of you.
been with us from the start father we commit to you our lives for we know that you are faithful through the stillness and the for you've been with us from the start father we commit to you our hearts father we commit to you our lives Three hundred sixteen, three one six for a closing song. Live out thy life within me. Live out thy life within me, O Jesus, King of Kings. Be thou thyself the answer to all my questionings. Live out thy life within me, in all things have thy way. I, the transparent medium, thy glory to display. The temple has been yielded and purified of sin. Let thy Shekinah glory now shine forth from within, and all the earth keep silence. The body henceforth be thy silent, gentle servants, moved only us by thee. Its members every moment held subject to thy call. Ready to have thee use them or not be used at all. Held without restless longing or strain or stress or fret or chaffing at thy dealings or thoughts of a Regret, but restful calm and pliant from bent and by us free, awaiting thy decision when thou hast need of me. Leave out thy life with Jesus, King of kings, be thou the glorious answer to all my questionings. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for such a great blessings that we learn from thee. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you will continue to bless us, to continue to guide us, to protect us, and to give power to learn something on how to take our own help. 
We know that's not easy for us to do it. But I know, we know, dear Lord, that uh, it is your will that we should cooperate with you while you are still there in the heavenly sanctuary. Give us the strength and give us uh, power to see to it, dear Lord, that we will make a final decisions that we are going to uh, cooperate with you all the way. We should, not, we should not look back, but we should look forward, dear Lord. And thank you for everything and uh, bless our church here. Give them courage and give them uh, blessings from thee that they'll be able to uh, cooperate and to continue following you. Thank you for everything, dear Lord, and for answering our prayer today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We have this hope that burns within our hearts. Hope in the coming of the Lord. We have this faith that Christ alone imparts. Faith in the promise of His Word. We believe the time is near when the nations far and near shall awake and shout and sing Alleluia, Christ is King. We have this hope that burns within our hearts, hope in the coming of the 